One of the basic rules of safe driving is two hands on the wheel. We're going to take a curve here. The view. Not so anymore. No hands and no feet. This new Cadillac comes with a cruise option that allows the car to steer itself. It automatically speeds up or slows down with the flow of traffic and will hit the brakes if it senses an impending collision. The feeling of the car having control, um, it's counterintuitive to everything we've ever been taught, but it's, it's also kind of fun at the same time. For now, the system only works on main freeways and requires the driver to keep an eye on the road. A camera mounted on the steering column can tell if you're not paying attention. So you can't take a nap. Correct, absolutely not. And if you do fall asleep or have a medical emergency, the system will actually disengage. It will slow down the vehicle to a full stop, put on the flashers, and call emergency medical services. Get ready to start seeing more drivers going hands free on the open road. A number of car makers are rolling out models with similar cruise control capabilities. The day of the driverless car is coming up fast in the rearview mirror. How are we going to keep drivers nimble and fresh as vehicles are more and more automated. Researchers at the University of Minnesota want to know how we humans are going to interact with machines that are capable of chauffeuring us around. This simulator, one of the most advanced in the country, is being used to test how automation that's currently available influences a driver's <laughs> behavior. All right, so the car is driving itself now. You can see the, the steering wheel is taking over. We're taking a virtual joyride on Highway 61 through the scenic River Bluff country of southeastern Minnesota. It's very realistic. Yeah. I mean, you feel the bumps in the uh -huh. road. If I was driving on this road, I would love to be able to just gaze at the lake and not have to pay as much attention to the driving environment. And so, you know, automation would allow me to do that. As you sit back, relax, and enjoy the scenery, you lose touch with what the car is doing. And that, as we discovered, oh, can be a problem when something yeah. unexpected oh, happens. Oh, oh, and... <laughs> you just went off the road, oh my God. Whoa. Stop. Oh. Oh. In the confusion, I lost all sense of how to get the car under my control. We were, we were very engaged in our conversation. We were, and then something went wrong, and we didn't know what to do. That's very true. That was a great test. Yeah. This transition period from using cars with human drivers to ones that are basically on autopilot is going to be tricky, but the car industry is investing heavily in the switch. I think conservatively, we're looking at a 15 to 20 year time horizon, but it could happen sooner. Tom Fisher is director of the U of M's Design Center. The university recently got a couple of federal grants to study how the coming of autonomous vehicles is going to transform our commute and our communities. Parking ramps 20 years from now will need to be turned into offices or light industry or apartments because we won't be storing cars in them. Fisher says the days of everyone owning their own car are numbered. The big automakers are planning on selling us mobility services instead of a new set of wheels every few years. Think of something like Uber or Lyft, only the vehicle that picks you up would be without a driver. Why would the automakers want to go to a mobility service? Well, as one of the car manufacturers told me, is that they think they can make somewhere between seven and eight times the amount of profit. Fisher believes a future with autonomous vehicles roaming neighborhoods waiting to be summoned will dramatically change the landscape of our cities. Currently, about 30% of the land in most metro areas is used for parking lots and garages, but that land could be developed into housing or turned into green space if fewer people own cars. So you see the tracks where the vehicles are? Mm -hmm. So the road becomes much greener. This is what researchers believe inner city neighborhoods will look like as automated vehicles eventually take over for the personal car. It's, it's inevitable, and the timeline, there's some debate on, but... These grad students are on a career path to be the city planners of tomorrow. They're already trying to figure out how communities are going to have to redesign themselves to tackle the transition 
to self-driving vehicles. One thing I think that pretty much everyone can agree on is there is a tremendous opportunity to improve safety. The expectation is that automated cars will have far fewer crashes because they will all be communicating with each other and know each other's precise movements. Today's greatest risk factor, human error, will be removed from behind the wheel. Almost all the accidents with autonomous vehicles have, become, have been because drivers drive into them. The vehicles don't cause the accidents, it's drivers who are still causing the accidents. There still are many technical challenges to overcome before driverless cars are the norm, especially in this part of the country because of our weather. They shoot out a laser beam and that beam comes back. Engineers at this U of M lab are testing a sensor that's being used to help guide automated car prototypes. It makes out shapes of people and other objects and then measures how far away they are so the vehicle is aware of obstacles. Okay, we're going to turn the lights off. The great thing about this technology is it can work in total darkness, but what needs more research is how well it'll perform in the extremes of a Minnesota winter. Both snow and ice can interfere with the signal. We're probably going to be the last <laughs> place because of uh, the weather issues. Road testing of driverless vehicles is happening now in more climate-friendly places like Arizona and Nevada, and that's where Professor Donath expects to see them first put to regular use by trucking companies as a way to deal with a shortage of drivers. That could happen, he says, in less than five years. I'm Jeff Ballion, Fox 9.